Hello, welcome to DEFCON 28 Demo Labs. Today I'm going to show you a tool called uh, Circo version 2. Hello, virtual friend. My name is Emilio. Uh, I'm from Argentina. I currently located in Japan and I have a background of hacking, networks, firewall, packets, electronics, bit of 3D printing as well. I present tools in various conferences around Asia, US, Europe, a bit of here and there. And I'm uh, actually 16 hours ahead DEFCON, so I'm in the future. As you can see, my English is very Argentinian and I'm definitely not a native programmer. So let's move on, on to Circo. All right, before I actually move on, let's talk about the legal disclaimer. This tool is uh, provided for educational research or testing purpose. Using this tool again against network system without prior permission is illegal. Radio waves are per country regulated, so you must check your own country to see if that you're doing within compliant regulations, etc., etc., etc. I'm not responsible for any good or bad things you do with it, blah, blah, blah. So, okay, great. Wait, what is Circo version 1 if this is version 2? All right, so Circo version, Circo version 1 is actually based on Python 2. It was a network implant using cheap hardware like a Raspberry Pi. And the idea is to exploit the zero trust that network automation tools has these days. The whole concept of if I'm the network automation tool, auto discovery things like Cisco switches, for example. So what about if I am a Cisco switch? That means that they will try to connect to me to grab my configurations. Exactly. So the whole concept of that was, okay, I build with cheap hardware and Cisco switch behave as a Cisco switch, as a honeypot, basically. And then I wait for automation tools to connect to me. So once they connect to me and they give me the credentials, thank you very much, I will actually exfiltrate it to the internet, to my own internet server. Well, for that, I come up with a few different techniques for exfiltration and also some additions of uh, encryptions and the for anti-forensics, etc. Uh, over the past year, um, well, actually over 2019, most of the uh, features and uh, techniques be used here were, were actually feedback from when I was presenting this tool in various conferences and friends and people suggesting things. and So it improved over the time. So just to show you how it looks actually version 1, let me turn off the camera. So version one used to be like a network outlet that you have uh, these things on top of your desk or under your desk where you put the network ports here. And inside was actually things like this, right? Raspberry Pi and some electronics, buttons, etc. Also, there's a bigger box of it, similar concept, but the network ports here, right? And you actually inside of this, let me see if you can open like that. You will have a Raspberry Pi and electronics and PoE, etc., etc. So that's pretty much what was done with version one, right? Okay, great. Good to know. So, what's version two about it? Well, bas basically, Python two doesn't. It went supposedly allegedly end of life, blah, blah, blah. So it need to be Python 3. So my, I dedicate time and migrate everything into Python 3, which is not that simple as replacing Python with Python 3 on the top. Nope, doesn't work like that. So most of the stuff was recoded. Probably 70, 80% of the code was recoded. So I took the opportunity and make it modular code. So that will be allow me to easily add or features and exfiltration techniques using modular code, right? Also, I had a couple of features that people suggest over the past. For example, MAC IP addresses spoofing when you do exfiltration. Also, I've I been suggested to actually, because I'm 
tapping, I'm man in the middle between a phone and a network, can I also record calls, like getting audio files? I do. I uh, add support for a tool called NetCreds, which actually capture an encrypted uh, credential or hashes of uh, NTLM, uh, HTTP, SMTP, IMAP, etc. Kerberos as well, right? FT FTP, SA, yeah, it various ones. I add as well, before I used to use either magnet or push buttons to detect if someone opened the alarm, and I, now I'm using a LDR, which is a light sensor basically. Uh, and an, I add an extra uh, exfiltration method using FM because this, the phone itself will authenticate. I also collect in that zip authentication hash. And I add a new camouflage hardware, which will be something very familiar to you. If you recall, this is a power injector for C from Cisco. Use it for phones or also for APs as well. So I'm actually going to use this as a new camouflage hardware. Instead using instead using these boxes, network outlets, I'm going to use one of these. Why not? For that, uh, I add also the TCP exfiltration. Uh, before it used to be HTTP, HTTPS. Now I, it's any TCP port you would like to use, 80, 40, 25, whatever. Um, because I'm using a new method for exfiltration, FM, so you will probably need one of these, which is your actually an SDR dongle, right? To be able to capture those radio waves. And also improve a lot of the Cisco IOS and uh, honeypots. The Telnet, uh, when I recode it, I improve the Telnet, the uh, SSH, the CDP and the LDP uh, demons, right? Okay, so let me go back to here, right? These are all the things that have been added in version 2 which we'll go today, just to recap, we have what honeypots we provide as a Cisco services. Remember, we're trying to emulate the Cisco switch. So we do provide CDP and NLDP advertisements as a Cisco switch on an actual phone, if you want to run in single mode. We also provide an SNMP agent, so you can actually pull, that, that's the idea of the automation system to pull the SNMP communities, uh, SNMP uh, MIPS from the Cisco switch. So we, we have one of those. We provide CLI via Telnet and SSH with quite a few commands for, and also a TCP stack. So when we get fingerprinting, we can actually reply saying that we are a Cisco switch indeed. For exfiltration, when we exfiltrate data, we actually send it, the, the honeypots will send the, either they come the credentials via Telnet or SSH or SNMP. So we have different various formats, right? The T for Telnet, the Telnet enable, the SSH, SSH enable, SNMP. And also because now we are sniffing credentials that the actual phone could be cascade to a PC behind it. So we're using NetCreds, so that will be the N and also the SIP, which is the voice hashes that we actually uh, capture. So I didn't want to make this longer. So now demo labs, demo time, right? Okay, so behind me, you will see I set up a lab, actually. I will explain you what the lab consists on. The lab actually has on this side, this case you see here, this is actually the whole network infrastructure. I have a the blue box on the top is actually my internet server. The yellow box is actually my network automation, so network administration server inside the network. The Cisco switch, a real one, called TK, it's called SH, SHTKY01, and also have a black box, which is my firewall, uh, my uh, proxy, DNS, DACP, pack file server, etc. On this side, I have connect, this is, a, an IP phone cascaded to a PC, right? And on the middle, you will see this box, right? This, which is contain one cable going to the phone, the white cable, right? And the other, the other cable going to the infrastructure, right? 
and of course power because this is using a magic power cable right are we good yes okay okay so let's move on okay on the right side i got access to my yellow box which is my network automations on the bottom i have access to my blue box which is my internet server which will be receiving called carpa right will be receiving the credentials from the internet and on the top i have access to the circle which is actually via out of band so first of all let's start carpa there goes internet ethernet uh, tcp 25 let's say right txt okay and before i start circle i want to connect to the real switch this is the real cisco switch on my infrastructure switch tokyo 01 so cdp neighbors okay i have a cdp which is the phone actually that you saw on the back ldp nothing because that phone only speaks cdp right so i'm going to start circle in the voice mode bridge mode and actually maybe ping right as an exfiltration so i will explain you before before this happened what i do is actually collect cdp details and L lldp from the actual peer switch just to get the names i'm going to derivate the name so if similar name to what they already exist okay i change my mac address get an ip address from the from the server uh, i start a few as a sniffer create a template and bring all the honeypots which is all of these cdp ldp ios telnet ssh snmp and they also the name apps os fuller to the tcp fingerprint services actually fingerprinted right and exfiltration i select pink right okay so now if i do show cdp neighbor from the real switch i can see there is another switch here okay so cdp neighbor details i can see the switch is called swtky03 has a 10.10.10.152 and it's a 2960ATC. So what about LLDP? DP neighbors. Okay, LLDP as well. I can see the same switch connected via CDP and LLDP. If I do the details, I can see the, the chassis, which match the MAC address I'm setting up, the interface, the name, the software version running, and the uh, capabilities from the switch itself, and the VLAN ID also, right? A standard LLDP information you get right so I'm in my automation tool let's see if I can ping that 152 10.10.10.152 yes I can ping it all right so let's try a tenant 10.10.152 okay I connect so let me type username and a password Okay, I got access to a Cisco switch, show version, give me a version of the Cisco switch. If you see on the circuit itself, it start to say sending credentials via ping. That means that he got credentials. So those credentials should appear on the bottom screen on Carpa, right? Because they're coming via ping. Carpa is in the internet and Cisco is on the internal network, right? Show inventory, show IP route. Show interface description. You behave like a Cisco. Show it be ARP. Show MAC address. Show ins status. All right. As you can see on the bottom of the screen, you see that it credentials coming from the protocol telnet, username Ola, password Defcon. You see? What about if I do enable now? I type in enable as well. I can do some commands like show show run and give me the configuration, but I cannot do some commands like conf t. I'm not authorized because I didn't code the whole iOS honeypot. Just enough for automation tool to find out. Similar should work by SSH. You can see in Carpa now Carpa receive a credential via Telnet. 
and the credential was secret. Lead mode, right? So I can also, sh I should be able to SSH as well. Yep, I got this is via SSH, same thing, same commands via SSH and Ternet are provided, right? Inventory, also I can put enable. Again, I get the same commands, right? So, what else we can do? Well, we can do an SNMP walk, right? Version 2, community. Here's a trick, right? Automation tool will try first their own community, the internal community they use in all devices. If that fail, they will uh, s switch to public, right? So let's try community. 10.10.10.152, right? Uh, well, it should escape that. Uh, wrong key. So what happened here, you can see on the carpa in the meantime, that credentials start to arrive, my pass, SSH, user admin, my pass, right? When I do, when I do an SNMP walk for this community, I don't get any answer. However, I did capture it. So automation tools will try public if they will fa fail back to public, right? And if I do that, let me cut it. When I do public, it actually reply as a Cisco switch with the name SWTKYO3, right? So it behave as a Cisco switch. Okay, what else we can try? In the oh, by the way, let me show you all those credentials that Carpa is uh, storing in a text file. There you go, the enable password. All those credentials are being stored in a text file, of course, but they're also being pushed to Faraday. So if I log to my Faraday dashboard, uh, if I go to manage, host, you will create automatically a host and you also add credentials to it. So you see that host, it has a telnet, the username and the password. The E stands for enable, of course, right? So those are being pushed automatically from Carpa into Faraday, right? Uh, oops. All right. The SNMP did not arrive yet. It should arrive soon. I think I'm cycling the credentials every 60 seconds, 30 seconds, I can't remember. So what about now? Let's try in Nmap. Uh, S SV for 10.10.152 and this is funny you will see some uh, when I run an app for service enumeration you may see paramico some errors here but that there's nothing wrong with it it's just because this debug mode is showing that but nothing crash on Circo still running so once I do the nmap let's see what nmap say I have running on that 10.10.10.152 which is my fake Cisco switch, right? Okay, so it has it recognized I have an SSH and a Telnet which is a Cisco Demons and also they connect the device as a Cisco iOS router Not bad, here you go, I got the community as well here by the SNMP community and that should be also push here, let me refresh this No not push yet should be coming up maybe I need to refresh that or maybe I'm excluding actually SNMP yeah most likely I need to add it all right no no big deal okay what else Let's stop this for a second. So those are pretty much all the features that we've been running in the past. So now I'm going to show you the new features we been working on it. So, okay. First of all, let me let's bring up Circo with the uh, DNS, right? 
and I'm going to connect to my PC on the back, right? But I'm going to connect remotely. And I'm going to, there you go. I'm going to generate, this is a PC running on the back, and I'm going to generate some FTP and Kerberos traffic. Just I'm going to replay some traffic, some pickups, basically. So when I start Cisco, I think this is minus D, DNS, right? A filtration DNS, for example. And here, it's a starting netcred sniffer, right? So when I, t I the PC now is using FTP and Kerberos, etc., the, from the PC, right? So because I'm sniffing the traffic that comes from the PC, I'm also going to exfiltrate that traffic too. That that's just running on, until the all the packets run, right? So it clearly finds some credentials because it, and it gets filtrated by DNS. There you go. The end for netcreds, username and a password and the actual FTP and port destination of that those credentials work. That's important because here is the source port of the automation tool or whoever connect to it, right? But he, in netcred I'm using the I, I care about the destination. Uh, what else I have to show you? I actually should have some. Uh, let's move on into something else, right? Let me cut this. You get the sense. Stop this. Okay. So I'm going to show you the show you the spoofing feature, right? Uh, TCP twenty five. For filtration and minus minus spoof, right? For that, I'm going to connect into. I need to specify VRLAN. I'm going to connect into the gateway, which is a black box on the, on the lab, which is my firewall, right? So I'm filtering for port 25, right? So originally my MAC address is this one, right? And my IP was 152.10.10.152. But because I specify minus, minus minus spoof, right? I'm actually starting the spoof discovery. What it does is, is look in the other interface for packets and MAC address combination and use those when I do exfiltration, right? Okay. So for that, I probably, let's see if I didn't finish one. Okay, I found a MAC address which is 100 and the, this MAC address. So on 25. So what I'm going to do is I can ping this. So I'm then going to connect again just to generate some credentials. All right. So I, that should trigger some credentials. And if I check the actual packet captures. Did I hit enter here? No. So I'm capturing packets. There you go. I start to see packets coming in. And as you can see, the source IP is 100. And the actual MAC address is matching. Uh, this is actually the PC, the PC behind me, probably. OK. Something went wrong here. Uh, probably some characters. Not, yeah, let me run it again. Okay. So that is done there. So now I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the voice features, right? Uh, yes. Cancel, cancel. All right. For that we use uh, let me use DNS and voice. Boip, boip, I think it's boip, yes. For this, I will need, uh, I will need to make a phone call, actually. Right. Is this phone actually login? Yep, it is, actually. So what I'm going to do Start Carpa. 
exfiltration is DNS and I'm zip hash collector, right? And RTP captures, okay? So I'm going to make a phone call. make a call great as you can see now it says sending credentials via DNS this is because that phone probably sent a zip request so that means that it's going to get a zip hash right so here you go yeah zip credentials right so those should be arriving in Carpa and they should have the format with a V there you go this is a zip hash actually right this two bits Pieces, and this is actually the register of the zip, the username, the username, and the type of uh, phone system. So, because we actually keep the captures of the RTP stream and the zip for control, so what we can do, we cannot exfiltrate this because they are big files. But what we can do is, once we pick up Cisco after the assessment, we can actually grab the pickups. And uh, pick up to up, pick up to up. Uh, I'm going to use the RTP stream, and I'm going to use. Oh wait, I can't remember the pick up to up, pick up to up. What was it? P. Okay. Uh, RTP, 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 P, and mix. Okay, so this will generate the web file. Uh, I should be able to play it back. Of course, I need to extract it, right? So let's co secure copy this to my actually 10.10.117 temp. Uh, I think it's username as well. Is not twenty dot thirty. There you go. Okay. There you go. So if I do play of that file. Hello, hello. As you can see, there you go. You get your Wi file. Great. So I got one more feature to show you, which is let's bring up Circo this time with FM and wireless exfiltration. But for here, I need to show you Howler. Howler is actually my different la computer, different laptop running a wireless and the SDR dangle. So here I will run this. Verbose, I will specify the frequency, sample 7, the wireless interface, and a log file. Alright, so before I run that, I want you to understand that I'm going to be using FM, so I, I bring up a screen so you can see it. So let me bring this up, channel 10 for wireless and frequency for FM. This is the decoder and for RDS. Right, let me do that. Okay. Maybe there. Right. So now I'm going to go back to my screen and actually start Circo. I'm starting with the wireless and the FM modules on.
Let me see if you can do uh, something else here. Alright, this is started, so I'm going to tell it again and I'm going to put some credentials. Alright, so starting exfiltration, so I'm going to switch to my howler. You see the silence now? You can see that there is a new station called Circo with different program types and different PI, which is this is the RDS type of the FM protocol. Well, not the FM protocol, but the RDS protocol. On the bottom, you can see I already start to to actually exfiltrate credentials here. The Wi-Fi one, the Telnet, the username Mundoi. Clearly, I type it wrongly. And also from FN. So you can see both credentials getting from FM and actually, oh, let me cut it so we are not all deaf. So we get the credentials by FM and actually by wireless as well. All right, that is pretty much. So before we move on, I want to explain you about one more thing. Let me go here, okay, close this, and let's start it one more time, bridge, spin. There's one more feature, which is actually the light sensor, right? So for this, I probably will need to go to switch. Let me see once circle start, Carpa is already on. Okay, so I will need to move to back camera probably. Once this stuff is up. Yep, it's up. All right. Okay. okay. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to open this box, right? Okay. Let me see if I can get it. There you go. Okay, what do we have inside? See if I, maybe I do a bit like that. There you go. So we have a Raspberry Pi power components, and on the bottom here we have a light sensor, right? So if I switch back, you will see a car pipe receive an alarm, and it actually. Cisco recognize the case has been open, right? Circo. So that's pretty much. So one thing I want to show you guys is the magic cable. So the magic cable I told you was, it looked like a cable like that, you know. In Japan they come like that, this is for Earth, right? This, this is not a magic cable. There's no magic here. You also can get magic here, this type of cables, right? This is Earth, or the British cables, which is this one, right? So where the magic come from? Well, the magic is like, I'm using the GPO, a pin in the Raspberry to modulate the FM frequency, and I need basically an antenna. So one way to get an antenna is actually, there's an Earth cable inside the power cable. 
So if you look into the where that earth cable connect into the circle, you will see there is a white cable coming out. This white cable, it come out from earth and it goes to the GPO of the Raspberry. And that is my earth, right? So that basically That give me actually a two, three meters and FM antenna, which great, great distance reach. So this is another method for exfiltrating when wireless is not an option due to 50, 80 meters length, right? You, you could go longer with FM. All right. That's all guys. So I hope you actually enjoy it. And let me know if it's anything, questions, just shout out, right? Okay, thanks. See ya.